welcome to Scotch for Dummies. Four guys on a Scotch journey to help you with your next Scotch purchase. And today, it's just me, Drew. I'm here to talk to you about something I know you've been waiting for. It's that time of year. It's time for our top five Scotches of the year. Now to say 2020 has been crazy is an understatement. But looking back, uh, I was able to look through some of our dreams we've had this year. And I'm pretty surprised at some of the great bottles we've had. And I wanna share some of those with you right now. So let's begin with some honorable mentions. So I wanna give you my first honorable mention and it's the King Alexander III. We gave this bottle five years ago, our very first 4.0, which is a perfect score from us. Now, five years ago, we were kind of young on our journey and we thought in 2020, let's go back and give it another chance and see what happens. Boy, did not disappoint. We re-reviewed re it again and we all gave it another 4.0. The bottle is amazing. It's six, six different casks that it has matured in and you can taste them all as you develop through it. It's very complex. The only problem with this bottle is that it's pretty pricey. It's around $250, give or take. The reason it did not make a top five for me this year is that we've been down that road before and it's really expensive. I don't wanna put something on a top five that we've already done once before five years ago. However, it is a really great bottle and doing it again in 2020, I realized how awesome this bottle is. If I can afford it, if you can afford it, you can't miss it. Another bottle that made my honorable mention this year is a Black Knot 15 Adela. Now it's around $125, but it's a great bottle. It's a really cool bottle. It's a square, different design, so it's kind of unique. This bottle is matured in a combination of American and Spanish oak Oloroso sherry butts. It's a bit pricey, around $120, but I really enjoyed this bottle this year. It was a nice surprise. I've not had too much of Black Knot yet, and I gave it a 3.5. And lastly, I want to talk about a wild card. It's technically not a scotch, but the Amrit Intermediate Sherry is a nice surprise that I picked up earlier in the year while traveling. This is an Indian whiskey. It's matured in either ex-bourbon or virgin oaks. It went through an intermediate maturing process in sherry butts in Amrit's Bangalore distillery and transferred back to whiskey in ex-bourbon casks for another round of aging. At $120, it's kind of pricey and hard to swallow, but the whiskey is not. Amaret has a lot of nice bottles out there, typically in the higher end range. Don't be afraid to pull a trigger on this one. It's a fantastic whiskey. Now that the honorable mentions are out of the way, let's talk about my top five scotches of the year. Coming in at number five, it's the Balvenie 12, the sweet taste of American oak. Around $80 a bottle, I was blown away by the palate of this scotch and gave it a 3.5 rating. To me, it was the essence of what a solid scotch should taste like. Um, Balvenie has been around for many years. There's a core of different Balvenie bottles out there. You'll see them in bars and liquor stores everywhere. And this bottle is definitely making into that range. I recall during our review, smelling the pure vanilla and caramel notes coming out of this one. I can even get the wood influence from the nose alone. Moving to the palate, you can tell we were all blown away with the taste we were getting. Vanillas, caramels, oaks, spice, a hint of even buttered toast was in there and a very long finish. I would state that it is a tad high on the price side. To me, it's well worth the price. I would love to have this bottle on my bar as a go-to scotch and share with anyone. It's a great bottle. My number four scotch of the year goes to Naked Grouse. This is a blended single malt. Some say it's a source of Macallan and Highland Park, but we really don't know. What I do know is it's a fantastic bottle with an affordable price tag of around $30. I was introduced to this bottle by a good friend Sunday Evening Scotch during a blind review he gave me and it opened my eyes to how magnificent this bottle is for the sherry influence that you're getting out of a $30 bottle. During this review, I remember tasting that Oloroso sherry, some toffee, some sticky pudding, and the hints of creme brulee. This bottle also made it to our top 10 scotches, under $50 voted by the scotch community. You should check out that review as well. Coming at number three, it's the Balvini 15 year old single barrel sherry cask. Now this bottle is a tad high in the price range around $135 on the shelf, but it does have a nice ABV of 47.8%. Now I gave this bottle a 3.5, but I'm a huge fan of the sweet side of sherry casks. However, if you watch the review, the title says best 15 year old on the shelf. If you are a fan of sherry, this is an old fashioned sherry bomb. Hints of dried fruit, um, molasses, almost like fruitcake. This big, heavy sherry hitter can even go against the likes of the Glendronic 15, 
revival and I think it would match up just fine. Coming in at number two, I'm stepping outside of my Sherry Love and going down the road. All roads lead to Isla, don't you know? That's right, it's the Ardbeg Oogadale. Now this bottle is priced around $100, but it's another fantastic bottle with a decent ABV of 54.2. I don't normally give out Forest to Isla bottles, but this bottle is well-deserved of a four this year. Looking back when we first started reviewing scotch, this was one of the first Isla peated scotches that we ever had. I specifically remember Sean bringing it to the bar and it, when we opened it, it just kind of, the peat just blew us away. It was so strong and, and smoky. We just, all of us were like, whoa, we just, it's just too much for us. Like most people, it's hard to jump right in and really enjoy the smoky peaty world of Isla. The fun part of the story is we put it on the shelf for a while, didn't touch it, came back to it about six months later and we all loved it. Now that our palates have matured, we went back and re-reviewed it in 2020 to see how good it did. The nose has everything you want in an Isla. The smoky, the peaty, the creamy, even essence of sweet. It's almost a perfect blend of flavors that give it a nice complexity. And that's what I recall during our review. A palette of sugar plums, raisins, pecans, dark cherries. It's an explosion of blends that you get in your mouth. And with a higher ABV, it really gives you that, the control to balance those flavors and dial into your palate. If you're into the smoky peatiness and some sherryness, for $100, it's a fantastic bottle and definitely worthy of my number two of the year. Drum roll, please. And for my number one scotch of the year, come on, did anyone really not guess what this is? It's Kilcarran eight year old cast strength. Another Campbelltown made my number one bottle two years in a row. Last year, it was Long Row 14 from Springbank. This year, another funky bottle made my list. Guess you can say I enjoy the funk. If you look back on January 6th of this year, I remember getting this bottle ahead of time for the end of the year, and I opened it originally, and I didn't really enjoy it when I first opened it. I don't know why. However, during this review, you can actually see me go from thinking about not even enjoying this bottle to selling it to one of the dummies to the end of the review, absolutely falling in love with this bottle, enough to say it's a 4.0 for me. It's around $70 if you're lucky to find it. When we first had this bottle, we had to get it overseas. It's just now making it to the US market. And I can tell you right now, it won't stay at that price for long and it absolutely will not stay on the shelf that long. So if you can find this bottle, buy a bottle or two or three, and by the way, send me one for suggesting it to you. There's sherry sweetness, old leather, musty on that, oh my gosh, on that funk. That Campbelltown funk is delicious. It's an amazing bottle, and rewatching the review, it gets a smile on my face just because how much I went from selling it to, to coveting this bottle. And this is actually my third bottle this year, and I'm hoping, hoping, fingers crossed, that I can find a couple more bottles on the shelves from where close by and get them myself and stock up from the bar. Cheers. Okay, that's it for me. I hope you enjoyed my top five. Hope that you can find some of these bottles. Uh, watch out for the other dummies top fives coming out. And by the way, we're all putting out our number one scotch of the year combined sometime around Christmas. Will this Karen make that list? I don't know, let's check it out and see. Have a safe and happy holidays. Salancha. Thank you.